Welcome, I'm Nan Jokerst, and this is our in-depth video about electron beam lithography, or EBL. There are two types of lithography, or patterning, that we'll discuss in this course, electron beam lithography and photolithography. In this video, we will talk about electron beam lithography, which uses electrons to make a pattern. In the photolithography video, we discuss the concept of spin coating, photoresist, exposure, and the development process. Electron beam lithography is similar to photolithography in many ways. EBL uses spin coating, exposure, and development steps, but rather than using photoresist, EBL uses electron beam resist, or what we call EBL resist, which is sensitive to electrons. Also, the exposure step in EBL doesn't involve light, but as the name implies, uses an electron beam instead. Typical EBL systems use the electron beam to sequentially write each feature in the pattern, in contrast to photolithography, where all of the pattern is illuminated at one time. The advantages of EBL include small feature sizes down to 10 nanometers or less, and a mask is not needed for patterning, so it's easy and fast to change a design. This is in contrast to photolithography, where a mask is required. Since there's no mask required for EBL, we simply use computer-aided design, or a CAD program, to lay out the pattern that we want to transfer to our substrate and that pattern is loaded directly into the EBL machine. Let's look at the process of EBL now in more detail. First, we select a substrate that we want to put a pattern onto. In the electronics industry, for example, we would start with a semiconductor wafer, such as silicon. The wafer is then coated with a thin polymer layer using a process known as spin coating. Using the same technology as spin coating for photolithography, but using this special resist that is sensitive to electrons, the EBL resist. So when we expose the polymer to a beam of electrons, the polymer undergoes a chemical change. This EBL resist is also very thin, since a thin resist is needed to create very small feature sizes. Let's take a closer look at the substrate coated with EBL resist. Here's a close-up cross-sectional view of the substrate with the EBL resist on it. The resist thickness may range from tens of nanometers to a few hundred nanometers, depending upon the desired process and feature size. The substrate thickness, by contrast, is usually several hundred microns. Next, we load the substrate coated with the EBL resist into the electron beam lithography instrument. The EBL is quite a complex instrument, but its basic components are as follows. There is an electron source, which is a small sharpened tip that emits a stream of electrons when a high voltage bias is applied. We call these emitted electrons the electron beam. Next is an electromagnetic lens system. Here we show a cross-sectional view. The lens system focuses the beam of electrons. The major difference in focusing electrons and the major advantage of EBL compared to photolithography is that an electron beam can be focused to an extremely small spot size, less than 5 nanometers in diameter. Just for reference, the cross section of a human hair is about 100,000 nanometers in diameter. Now, below the lens system is a set of beam deflectors. Beam deflectors can electronically deflect the focused beam of electrons at extremely high speeds. This controls the position of the electron beam, allowing the beam to be steered to different regions of the substrate. Typical beam deflectors can move the beam from one position to another in a matter of nanoseconds, so it's very fast. The electron source emits electrons, the lens system focuses the beam, and the deflectors steer the beam across the substrate. The beam deflectors direct the beam across the substrate based on that pattern you have drawn using the CAD program and that you've loaded into the EBL system. A pattern can be as simple or as complex as you wish. 
You may only have a few shapes to pattern, or you may have millions of shapes to pattern. All of this is computer controlled and very fast. The EBL reads the data from your computer file program, and this information is used to steer the electron beam to create your pattern in the resist. When the EBL has completed the patterning, we refer to the substrate as exposed, since it has been exposed to the electron beam. The resist that was exposed to the electron beam is chemically different from the resist that was not exposed. The next step is to remove the substrate from the EBL instrument and to submerge it into a chemical bath known as developer. The developer will dissolve the resist material that was exposed to the electron beam, but it will not dissolve the resist that was not exposed to the electron beam. After a brief time in the developer, typically one to two minutes, we remove the substrate and rinse the substrate, usually with isopropyl alcohol, and dry it with pressurized nitrogen gas to ensure that we have a clean, dry wafer. At this point, we have successfully patterned the EBL resist on the substrate using our electron beams. Now, you may remember from the photolithography video that the resist layer is intended to be only a temporary layer. The pattern resist is intended to be used with other processing steps that creates a permanent pattern on the substrate. In the photolithography video, we demonstrated etching a metal with a photoresist pattern protecting part of the metal from the etchant. This is called an etchback process. However, in contrast, to achieve the small feature sizes we desire in the EBL process, we typically use a different process to pattern these vacuum deposited thin layers of added material, such as metal. The process we use with EBL is called liftoff. First, we pattern and develop the EBL resist, and then we deposit the metal layer on top of that EBL resist. Any area where the EBL resist was removed is where the metal sticks to the substrate. When we dissolve away that EBL resist in acetone, the metal that's sitting on top of the resist is also removed. Here's an example of an EBL substrate that was patterned and then underwent subsequent metal evaporation and liftoff. You can see just how small the features patterned in EBL can be. Here, we have metal lines that are only 35 nanometers wide. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thank you for joining me today. Hi, I'm Nan Jokers at Duke University, and I'll be joined in this video by PhD student Yu Chen. Hi, Nan. In this video, Yu Chen will demonstrate the electron beam lithography process, which is used to make patterns as small as 10 nanometers. The electron beam lithography equipment is located in the clean room, so let's get gowned up and head in. Sure. In this video, I will go through the process steps for electron beam lithography, or simply EBL and I will demonstrate how to use EBL to pattern a thin layer of metal on a substrate. First, we choose a substrate. In this case, we will be using a silicon wafer. Silicon is the most common semiconductor material used in the electronics industry. This particular wafer is 50 millimeter in diameter and approximately 300 microns thick. Our first process step is to coat the wafer with EBL resist using spin coating. Resist is a temporary polymer coating that we will use to create a pattern on our sample. This is the spin coater we will use to coat the wafer with resist. We place the wafer on the spin chuck, taking care to get the wafer nicely centered. With the wafer centered, we turn on the vacuum to hold the wafer in place. We program the spin coder controller with the spin speed and time we wish to use. In this example, we will spin the wafer at 5000 RPM for 40 seconds. We are now ready to spin the EBL resist. 
We use a small plastic pipette to take a few millimeters of resist from the bottle. Next, we pipette the EBL resist onto the wafer, right in the middle. With the EBL resist on the substrate, we press start on the controller to begin the spinning process. The wafer quickly spins to 5,000 RPM. It will spin for 40 seconds, then slow to a stop. After spinning the EBL resist, we remove the wafer from the spin coater and bake the wafer on a hot plate at 180 degrees Celsius for two minutes. This removes any remaining solvent from the EBL resist and solidifies it into a solid, thin polymer film. This particular resist forms a polymer film that is only 200 nanometers thick, that is 0.2 micrometers. For comparison, the width of a human hair is about 100 micrometers. This truly is a thin film. After the two-minute bake, we are now ready to pattern the wafer. Let's walk over to the EBL instrument. This is the electron beam lithography instrument, or EBL. The first step is to design a pattern using the software provided with the EBL. This computer-aided design, or CAD software, allows us to draw arbitrary patterns that we wish to transfer to the wafer. We have already designed a pattern, which we can view on the computer screen. Now we load our wafer into the EBL. The inside of the EBL is under vacuum because air would interfere with the electron beam. So in order to load our wafer, we first put the wafer into this special chamber known as a load lock. The load lock is a small vacuum chamber that we can pump down quickly after we have loaded our sample. The load lock is connected to the high vacuum EBL chamber by a door that we keep closed while we load our sample. This enables us to keep the EBL chamber under high vacuum while we load our sample into the load lock. There is a small platform in the load lock for holding our sample. We place our wafer onto the platform and secure it with a spring clip. With our wafer loaded, we can now seal the load lock vacuum chamber. We then pump down the low lock chamber to remove the air. A small vacuum pump is connected to the low lock for this purpose. After about two minutes, the low lock chamber is completely pumped down, and we open the small door to the main EBL chamber and transfer our wafer into the EBL using the transfer arm. There's a receiver inside the EBL that holds the wafer platform. Once the platform is secured inside the EBL, we slide out the transfer arm and close the door to the low lock. The wafer is now inside the EBL and we are ready to begin the patterning process. We now must verify that the electron beam is properly focused. The electron beam should be focused down to a small spot size since the small size of the electron beam is what allows us to pattern such small features in the EBL. Let's adjust the focus of the electron beam so that we can get a nice crisp image of the calibration sample. When we are able to form a well-defined image of the sample, we know the electron beam is properly focused. Now we load our CAD file that contains our pattern and set the exposure time. For this particular pattern, we choose 2.6 microseconds for the exposure time. We are now ready to expose the EBL resist on the wafer. We initiate the patterning process on the computer. Depending on the pattern, this process may take a few minutes to several hours. Our example is expected to take only about two minutes. Okay, so after about two minutes, the EBL exposure process is complete. We will now remove the wafer from the EBL, again using the load lock. With our wafer removed, we can now develop the wafer to form a pattern in the EBL resist. The chemical developer will dissolve away the EBL resist film only in the regions that were exposed to the electron beam. All other areas of the EBL resist will remain on the wafer. To develop the wafer, we submerge it in a bath of developer designed for this EBL resist for about two minutes. We can now remove the wafer Rinse it with isopropyl alcohol and dry it with compressed nitrogen gas. We now have a pattern wafer. The pattern we drew using the CAD software is now in the EBL resist layer on the wafer. 
For this example, we will evaporate a thin metal film onto the substrate so that we form a permanent metal pattern on the substrate surface. The metal film deposition process is done using a separate dedicated instrument called a vacuum evaporator. The entire process takes about three hours and won't be shown in this video. We've deposited a 50 nanometer thick gold film onto our pattern wafer. Then remove the remaining EBL resist by rinsing in acetone solvent. The results our wafer now has gold metal in the regions which we expose with the EBL. Let's place the wafer under the microscope to see our pattern. Hmm, I'm having trouble seeing it. Our features are so small that an optical microscope cannot produce a clear image. An optical microscope can see objects down to about a half of a micrometer. But some of the features we pattern are smaller than that. We'll need a different way to image. Luckily, we have a scanning electron microscope that can image objects down to a few nanometers in size. We've loaded our wafer in the SEM and have managed to acquire some nice images. Take a look. These look great. And they look just like the pattern we drew using the CAT software. Thanks for joining us for the electron beam lithography demonstration.